everyone. Thanks so much for stopping by today. This is Amy. I am going to show you how to paint a yellow and purple floral design on this pickle jar. I did a video last week where I crackled the video, or excuse me, crackled the pickle jar, and I thought today when I was uh, getting ready to empty this out, you know, this would be a great video to go ahead and do a cute little floral design on it and upcycle it so that it doesn't end up in the landfill. Alright, so for this video I am going to be doing a number 12 I think this is a number 10 uh, let's see, two number 12's and a number 10 flat brush and a number one liner brush. All these are plaid one stroke brushes. I will be using lavender, moon yellow, wicker white, perfect purple, pale yellow, thicket, it's almost empty. Red violet and fresh foliage. I've already cleaned off the jar, removed the label, and it's ready to go. So I'm going to start with doing my yellow, the position of my yellow flowers. And for the purpose of this video, I'm I'm just I'm always fearful of doing doing. Uh, around the bottle because I'm so good about sticking my fingers on it. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'm doing, it's just kind of a, kind of similar to what I did yesterday in yesterday's video where I'm doing chisel edge and I'm just coming right back so I'm creating basically a puddle that has two strokes on it. So I'm creating a puddle and then another stroke. If you can see that. And then I'm doing it again. Petal. Another petal over it. If I feel like the other point isn't sticking out enough, I can go right back over it. And then come right here and do it again. Just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and place another yellow one. I'm going to really try very hard not to put my fingers in these. And just pull it. And do it again. Very simple. Now, as you see, I am turning my base and going around it. So wish me luck. Like I said, I'm very good about sticking my fingers in it or hitting it on the table. Just craziness for me. Whoops, I kind of did that one a little differently. Oh well, it's fine. Alright, so I did three. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my brush into the moon yellow because this is the pale yellow that I'm using and then I'm going to go over it. Just do the petals again. It's not going to hurt it because the thing of it is is when you put thicker painting on the glass it will make it more durable. Now something like this, if you're using it as a storage jar, it's going to be handled more than, say, one of my wine bottles. So it's okay, it's good for it to have some extra coatings on it. The main thing when you're painting is that you want it to be durable, you want it to be have good coverage, but you also don't want it to be so thick that when you when you bake it, it will bubble. And I've had that happen to me before 
work really hard on a project and then have the glassware bubble. Or not the glassware, but the paint. I'm sure you understood what I meant, but the paint bubble. The glass doesn't bubble. That's the paint. Now I'm going to go back over it just a little bit. Just throw another color in it. I mean, it's still the same color, but just another, just to give it a little bit more interest. You could actually do this with white too. Well, like I said, it's just giving it, I got some bubbles in there. I want to make sure I pop those out. And do this too. And if you don't want to, if you're happy with the way it looks with just the two, that's fine also. You don't have to go back over it. And it would look good with some white over the top of it too if you wanted to do that instead of using the yellow again. Alright, so then I'm going to pick up my other brush. It's my other number 12. And I'm going to come through and do basically a very similar thing, but with the purple. And actually, I'm just going to pull using these I'm not going to double, actually be double, um, doubling up on the petals at all. I'm just doing basically the same thing on the chisel edge and just pulling into the center. Just doing one color, trying to keep my hand up and off the, off the paper. Now I can do some that are say they're partially opened like this and I can come back around even do some that are like this like that go over them again and just have some that are just maybe a little bit smaller and do it like that. It's up to you. Then I can go into my white and just come back over it. That one's pretty thick, but that's okay. And then just pull it like that. I mean, if you want to put more purple over the top like I did on the other ones, as far as yellow goes, you can do that. You can go back over it again. If you want, you can just do another color like this. Scrape that off a little bit. Very loose, just very loose, and that's fine. Loose painting. Kind of scrape that off. Come back over here with the white. Do it again. Again, just think of how much more durable it is with this next coat on it. Do the same with this little one. And then take the paint and I'm just going to come up just a little bit near the center because I, I really do want to, well, this one maybe I won't be able to pull the center out of it. 
Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. As you can see it's just a colorful little design very simple my main focus is to get you to paint that's what I'm interested in I want people to feel comfortable painting and being creative you know don't worry about whether it's perfect or not it doesn't matter it's really not important in the scheme of things it's if you're finding something that helps you relax take your mind off of things that you feel really good about being creative with that's what's important very much so I'm just going to do that slide in like that come back over this way and I'm going to put some more purple in here just a matter of laying, layering it and getting you to be happy with, with your design. If you want to come and pop in here with some more purple, you can do that. Very easy. Let's grab some more purple here. Let's put white on there. I don't think I will. And you don't even have to cover the entire surface. Just pull over the top of it and it just gives it a little bit of um, I don't know contrast some more interest and then it's more durable because you've put layers on it more durable it's colorful very colorful alright so the next thing we're going to do is take our little number four deer foot stippler which I think I forgot to mention and I have the violet purple and then I'm going to do the moon yellow and then come by and do the centers on these very simply that. Oops, I'm not putting too much on here, of course. I get it pretty much the way I want it to be, and then I do that. Hold on. We'll come back to that one. And you can put your centers going all the same direction. You can definitely stagger them so they're, they're appearing to go in different directions showing movement up to you definitely up to you okay I'm going to come over here do the same thing And I love these little brushes. These deer foot stipplers are just, they're awesome. If you haven't tried them, I would definitely recommend it. Okay, let's go back to this crazy little one. And try to get some of that paint off so it looks nicer. And just tap some of that in there. Sometimes you just kind of got to work it a little bit but then it turns out great. Alright, so then I'm going to actually do the reverse for my other flowers and do the yellow on top and the purple, or violet on the bottom and let's go ahead and get that tapped in. Now this one has mainly the yellow on it and I do want to have this to where it looks like I've got a little bit of the center showing through so I'm going to put the, again, put some more yellow on here and the 
red violet behind and come back in here and just kind of tap. Doesn't have to be too big. Makes it look like it's got the center in it. And we'll do the same thing with this. Bring a bit more yellow on it if I want. Pretty good. All right, so let's just keep going with this. Do the same thing over here. Tap, 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 tap. And they're cute. Put tap, 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 and they're cute. Tap, tap, tap. And it's cute. Alright. And then again, we just keep going. And this one, let's put it like this. Kind of has a little opening. With the base, which is fine. All right. And I'm going to come back over to this because I did want to make it look like it had a center. Grandma, or Grandma, I call myself Grandma all the time for my grandkids. What I was thinking. <laughs> oh, I'm losing it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take the number 10 flat brush. And I am going to use my Thicket Fresh Foliage. Tip into some of that Moon Yellow. And... Start in to putting in some some of my little stems and now with something like this because you're doing a small jar you don't have to put stems in it I mean you can just come up to it and start putting flowers in it but you know I'm really used to doing like stems, so I am going to do some stem work. Just pull it down. Pull this over here. Again, you need to, you can do it with this brush if you want, or you can bring in this brush, the liner brush. I can do it either way. Just know that when you you do this and you put more color on it, what's it doing? It's actually giving it more durability because you're making it a little thicker by adding the extra colors to it. Now this one, let's see which way to go here. I could actually pull this this way, make it look like it's hooking to that direction or it's coming down this way. Come back over, pulling it down. And put some more yellow in it. Or as I say in my other um, videos. If you don't want to do this part, you can just put leaves around it and call it a day. But I'm going to pretend that we've got the vines and that they're pretty. They're little stems coming out. And then I've got a, something else that I'll be 
putting on here. You get too much paint on your brush, just scrape it off. And I'll just act like I'm putting that through here and it's coming down. Yeah, glass is definitely a different beast to paint on, that's for sure. Definitely is different. Different behaviors. Wax paper is awesome to paint on when you're trying to create a design on glass and you just want to get the hang of the stroke. It's a perfect way to do it. I highly recommend because it's slippery too, just like painting on glasses. When you paint on glass, it's just a different type of a surface as I mentioned and the wax paper slippery too. It's affordable, not expensive, and you can just practice your little heart out and go about your day and do your creation. Alright, so then I have that one so we can pretend too that it's coming through here. And the vines don't all have, or the stems don't all have to come down. They can go in different directions, but technically if you were doing a doing a bouquet, they would all go down and in the same direction. So however however you want to do it. Okay, so we got them all. Alright, so then another thing that you can do is to take your liner brush and then just do some other little vines that you can just use as fillers, really. Just maybe go around the glass a little bit. Not too much. You don't have to focus on this too difficult or too hard. And they can come in different directions too, this little piece that I'm adding. And I do want to go back over it with some of the other colors because I do want it to have a little bit more on it than just the thin little coat because it will not be very durable if not. So I'm going to do the same thing. It's coming over that way. Put it down this way. Okay, let's see. I think I have another one I do. Let's see how much fun. It's just so much fun. You can have your friends over. Get some glass jars and just paint away. Very easy. Definitely. Okay, so with this, I just wanted to do, just come out, do some little designs. I mean, these can be, like I said, they're like little fillers. Go over it. Out from it like that. You come from the vine or the I don't know why I keep saying vine from the stem. They don't have to be like all the same length or anything. You really have to connect. To be honest with you. This just takes a little bit of time. And I decided to do this part now. I might have on paper created this part last, but I am going to put in a few leaves. So 
that will make it great if I can just paint over some of this, just make it look a little more natural. And they, these can be put on thinner too. Like I said, with the way this brush is handling, it's probably going on thicker than, than it really needs to be because they could be thinner. Not so thickly done, but it's fine. And you don't even have to do this part. Not a requirement. Use your Yours, your creative juices. And if you don't like the yellow in it, which you know I do, but if you don't like the yellow in it, then then do something different. You know, maybe you could even throw some white in it, or just do the two greens. That's fine too. All right, so we're almost done with this part. And you can come over the actual initial stem too. You don't have to be afraid to do that either. Put a little yellow in it. All right, so I'm going to kind of stop with that part. Grab my number eight again, and then this part, I'm just going to put in a, a variety of different shapes of leaves. Try to do a variety. Um, anyways, I go to my my main, which is just the easy little holes like that. Just get some of this paint off. It really drives me crazy to have too much paint on my brush. And then there's this kind where you can go out and come back in. And on this type of a uh, leaf you can you can you know rotate the darker side. I think I'm raising up some of the paint underneath. Anyhow you can raise up or not raise up you can if you want to have like some of the green, the dark green, and then some of the lighter green, you can do a little bit of both. Rotate it a little bit. So what's happening here? Get this cleaned off a little bit more. All right. So then, if you want to do these, these are a little bit bigger. Basically what I'm doing is pushing them down and then making the kind of round or partially partially round. So then you can do I'm trying to get them get my hand turned a little bit here. You can just overlap them and do another one that's just kind of it's just kind of not completely round but it has more of a rounded shape to it. And then I can just take this little stem and pull it in, in there also. Let me do this one a little bit better. Starting to pull up some of the paint. I have to be careful. That's another thing you really have to watch when you're doing glass is that you don't pull up paint. So I have those kind of leaves and then I can just do more of my regular If you're concerned, you can go ahead and add some dry time to your painting. And by that I mean, you know, maybe give it an hour or so, let it rest, let it dry, and then you can come back in and throw in 
some of the leaves on top so that you're not getting you're not picking up some of the paint that's underneath that's that can be a problem especially when you're trying to do you know, like a design and it's layered you can easily pick up the paint from underneath of it and then it starts looking like you're like it's crackled or whatnot and that's really not what you're doing like I said you just kinda just take your time there's no racing here and then just rotate colors I put nice little stems in if you can. If you find that you're having an issue with the paint pulling up, you can even hit it with a hair dryer or heat gun. Anything that you might have around the house, it would throw off some heat to give it some quicker drying time. Okay, let's see here. Pull up some more paint off of here. And it's just very easy to do. See, it just, to me, is so relaxing. Just take your time. Have fun with it. I mean, that's the main thing, too, is to have fun. Not only are you trying to relax, you're trying to just find some calm and some more of a zen type answer when you're when you're relaxing and you're being creative such a great combination I think now we can the some leaves go on the opposite direction we don't want our leaves to all be going one way, of course. They're not fish swimming. Right? Alright, let's see if I want to add any more leaves or not. I can add one up here. Just not sure whether or not mixing a little better. And I'm sorry, my furnace is starting up. So let's see, I think we're going to stop with that. You know, another thing you could do on this too is put some dots around the centers. That would be pretty. But basically, very simple. Just a few different strokes and you're good to go. So I hope you like this. Again, this is a great little jar to use as a little storage jar or you could even put a candle on it if you want to put a candle on it and have it as a piece of home decor you could do that too nice little light to maybe even stick a candle on your bathroom when you're having guests over or whatnot very versatile type of uh, little jar little storage jar or candle holder however you want to use it Alright, I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button, the notification bell. And at the very end, if you would share this video on your social network with all your family and friends, I would appreciate it. Until the next time, you have a good one. <music>